Six minutes, seven seconds left of the second quarter. Delaware trying to retake the lead. They're down six to three. Coleman goes in motion from right to left. Keo keeps it. Has room to run. He's going to walk into the end zone, and Delaware's back on top. Keo to his right. Off his back foot. Touchdown! Charles Scott! Today, the NCAA announced the addition of six new teams that will be moving up from the FCS AA division to the FBS 1A division for football. One of those teams is the University of Delaware. The Blue Hens also hired a new head coach this offseason. Former NFL quarterback and Delaware alumni Rich Gannon was selected to lead the Blue Hens into the FBS. Here's what the new coach had to say about his new team. Football right now. Special teams has been a problem the last couple of weeks. The offense turning the football over, the lack of production and consistency at the quarterback position. And that to me is is really contributed to why the, maybe the defense hasn't been as dominant as they were a year ago. The year is 2013. The Delaware Blue Hens are among a group of six FCS teams that have been selected and granted promotion into the FBS division. As a part of a league expansion project to improve competitiveness at the 1A level. This is their story. What is going down YouTube? Welcome to the Delaware Blue Hens Dynasty on NCAA 14. This is my first YouTube series ever, along with my first YouTube video ever, and I'm really excited to bring it to you guys. I've enjoyed uh, NCAA 14 for a long time, and after watching other YouTubers like TNJ and his Whitetail series, it really motivated me to make my own series, and well, I'm going to give it all I got, so uh, without further ado, let's get into it. The uh, whole objective of this series is to make it as realistic as possible. Um, I laid a lot of ground rules for myself, like, for example, I lowered all of the players' injury ratings to get more realistic injuries, because as you guys know, injuries in this game don't happen uh, near as often as they should. So that's kind of one of the things we're going to be doing. And also, you know, obviously we'll have really strict recruiting rules and we'll be doing things like um, limiting what our quarterback can do pre-snap based on his awareness rating. And there'll be other things that we'll go over as we go along. But uh, yeah, I think it's time we get on the practice field and meet the team. So we'll start things off with our starting quarterback, number two, Trent Hurley. He's a redshirt junior. He's got the best arm on the team in both throw power and throw accuracy with 76 and 72, respectively. Not great, but uh, not bad either. We can definitely work with that. Behind Trent, you're going to have fifth-year senior quarterback Trevor Sasek, who's uh, six foot six. He's a big guy. He might play some receiver as well as being a backup quarterback. And then the number three guy is Justin Burns, who is a redshirt junior. He's more of the scrambling type. We hopefully won't have to see much of them, and it'll be mostly Trent back there. And then next, that's going to bring up our starting every down running back, senior Andrew Pierce. He's uh, got 88 speed with 88 acceleration. 
decent strength to go along with that. Um, not really a blazer by any means, but just a real balanced running back that's going to see most of the carries. The uh, other running back we'll get to see quite a bit of this year too is also our number one corner um, and starting kick and punt returner, Travis Hawkins. He's a senior, wears the number one jersey, so you know he's going to be a game breaker. He's more of the speed back that's going to be used on the sweeps and the screens and the things like that. So for our playmaker receiver, we're going to have another fifth-year senior in Rob Jones. Where's the number five? 5'10", 185 pounds, uh, 92 speed, 93 acceleration. He's the best receiver we have stat-wise, but he's going to play in the slot because of his speed and his catching ability. We're going to put some taller guys out on the outside. So look to see a lot from him this year, too. The last guy in offense that we're going to highlight here is uh, junior tight end Nick Boyle. Um, Not real great at anything, just kind of good. He's a real jack of all trades. Um, Doesn't really drop a lot of passes, can help with the outside blocking. Um, And yeah, that's your blue hen offense for 2013. Now we'll uh, switch over to the other side of the ball and highlight some of our playmakers on defense. We'll start things off with our starting free safety, uh, fifth-year senior, who I believe is a graduate transfer from Navy, um, Jake Gusty. Um, Really tenacious tackler, like flies all over the field, just really good pursuit angles. Is, is his strength of his game so he's going to be our free safety back there and then playing one of the hybrid strong safety linebacker positions in our attacking 3-5-3 defense is a talented super sophomore number three Craig Brodsky um, even faster than Jake back there at the free safety 91 speed 85 acceleration, not as hard of a tackler, but just a really good athlete. Um, Look for him to play that linebacker position, uh, corner. He's going to be all over the field on defense and may even see some time on the other side of the ball just because of how good of an athlete he is. Then at corner, um, we have a guy we talked about earlier who's also going to play the backup running back, more speed back type guy. Um, the number one corner, uh, Travis Hawkins, really just a big time playmaker. We're going to miss him after this season's over, but yeah, he's going to hold down that number one corner spot. And then our other corner is a six foot three, uh, red shirt junior transfer from Maryland. Um, Mario Rousen, really big, strong, physical corner out there on the outside, um, gonna line up on the other team's biggest receiver. Can just really outmuscle some of those smaller receivers, and it's gonna be a big time uh, playmaker for us. Hopefully, um, there on the outside. Next, we're gonna go inside and talk linebackers. We got uh, redshirt third-year sophomore uh, Jeff Williams, six-two, two hundred pounds, freaky fast. There's a lot of speed on this team. We're, we're going to need it. Um, Jeff plays that outside linebacker position. Could easily switch over to the hybrid linebacker safety position if we needed him to. Just another one of those guys that's all over the field. Now let's move inside to one of the big fellas on the D-line. Junior defensive end, Laith Wallachlager. One of those just anchor type defensive ends. Not real fast, big and strong. Could move inside and play the nose in this kind of defense if we needed him to. But he's going to play what I call that anchor. The slower but stronger defensive end on the... I guess he you, you would be the strong side defensive end. So, yeah, look for him this year too. And the last defensive player we'll look at is the other defensive end on the other side. Uh, junior Derek Salisbury. He's more of a pass rusher, speed. 
um, to compliment Lath on the other end. Um, get, look for him to get in there and disrupt some passes in the in the pocket. So let's get in here and uh, look at the rest of our roster we got. So you saw um, Trent Hurley, our starting quarterback, pocket quarterback. We mentioned Trevor Sasek, 6'6". Six, six. Um, so I like to have a tall receiver out there in like goal line formations to uh, you know be that kind of like end zone fade type threat. You'll have Justin Burns, who's a little bit more of a scrambler, pretty good acceleration, and then last is a freshman Kyle Yoakum, who's actually a really good strong tackle breaker. Uh, may end up moving to running back. We'll see though. We'll slide over to a running back. You saw Andrew Pierce. Um, he's really the only listed running back that's going to get to you know, actually play. Other than that, you're going to have uh, Travis Hawkins and maybe another corner or receiver, faster guy that's going to come in there and be like the third running back. Um, Wes Hills here is probably going to redshirt. Um, looking at his stats, I like him a lot more at receiver. Um, not real fast, so he's not going to be much of a threat out of the backfield, but he can be that like possession type receiver so he's probably not going to play this year you got joe fortunato a fullback fortunato um he big strong guy well strong for his size um, he may end up moving to offensive line if he can put some weight on we'll see about that we don't use a lot of fullbacks in our offense i mentioned rob jones and then your other receivers, you're going to have Michael Johnson, pretty basic receiver. Mike Milburn, 6'4", taller guy. Uh, so you'll see him too. He's a senior. Only had him for a year. Gerald Harrison's an interesting player because if you look, he's not really that great at anything, but you slide down to defensive ratings and he can tackle. Um... He might move to defense. We'll see. And then you got Deontay Cherry, who I forgot to mention in the highlights, is uh, another faster guy on the team. Not great hands with uh, 44, so he's not a great receiver, but he'll probably be that third running back out of the backfield this year. And being that he's only a freshman, um, look for him to grow back there, and uh, as the years go by, he's definitely going to rise the depth chart. Then you just, you know, you got the bottom. <laughs> the drop-off is real after that. Just a bunch of guys that aren't really good at anything. But above Deontay here is going to be the bulk of your receiving yards. Got a slide over to tight end. You got Nick Boyle. Um... And then the third tight end here, Malcolm Bush, is probably going to be the second tight end on the depth chart. He's got the best tackle breaking, you know, after Nick Boyle and uh, catches the the other guys. Ryan Cobb and Sam just can't catch. So your two tight ends that you're going to see in, like, ace sets and stuff like that, you're going to have Nick and Malcolm I look at the offensive line real quick. The uh, best offensive lineman we have on the team right now, uh, Junior Earl Ladson. He's the left tackle, or blindside tackle. Real, uh, just not real fast, but just real good blocking stats. Brody Kern, um, gonna play the backup at a lot of. We only really use like two backup linemen, and then the rest of them just kind of don't see the field that much. So then you'll have J.D. Durko, Dezerko, Dezerko, at the other, at the left guard, Christian Marchienda, Mar yeah, Marchienda, uh, Brandon Heath at center, Justin Glenn, uh, we're going to have to replace center next year, go over to right guard, we're also going to have to have another starting right guard because the drop-off is bad after him, too. Bobby Kennedy. So we're going to have to go after some offensive linemen and recruiting. And then you got a younger tackle on the other side, Sam Kalura. So, yeah, that's your O-line. We'll slide over to defense now. Saw Lath, 
Walla Clagger, we'll call him, probably call him Wally to keep it easy. Your strong side D end. Hollerman, not real good. Uh, Andrew Opuku's rating is really low, but he's really fast. So maybe on those third and long type pass wrestling situations, you'll see more of him. Uh, you saw Derek Salisbury. I think we're going to call him Steak. So you got both your defensive end got nicknames. You got Wally and Steak holding it down for the next two years. As they're both juniors. Troy Catalano, uh, nothing real special about him. He is a sophomore, so he does have room to improve. And then you'll have Cedric Udegby, freshman, so he'll have room to grow too. We, he might redshirt this year. And then have Catalano and that, what was his name, Opuku be your backup defensive ends. At the nose tackle in our 3-5-3 defense that relies heavily on having a big, strong, you know, just can clog up the middle type defensive tackle. You got two seniors, so we're going to have to go after, uh, well, maybe not. We got some other guys here, but your two guys that are going to see the field at nose this year the most often are fifth-year senior Jack, Zach Kerr, I'm sorry, uh, and then... Irv Titre, Titre, we'll go with that. So yeah, we'll go to linebackers. You saw Jeff Williams, um, one of the better players on the defense. Has he's a sophomore, so he's got years to grow. You'll have Brandon Harrison, a backup linebacker. Starting middle linebacker is going to be Patrick Callaway. Um, not real fast in comparison to a lot of the other speed we have out there on defense, but he'll uh, be enough for that middle linebacker position. In this 3-5-3 defense, that middle linebacker is he's really like a stand-up defensive end. Like he's, he's more about the middle of the field, going after the running back on those inside runs. So, not too concerned about his speed there. And then another, his backup linebacker, you're going to have Derek Battle, who's probably, he's a little bit faster, so he'll slide out to the outside linebacker position sometimes, but he'll see quite a bit of the field too. You got a freshman linebacker, Keith Green, who's got good speed. I really like having good speed at linebacker in this defense. That 3-5-3 three, three attacking, like blitzing, you never know where the pressure's coming from type defense is really reliant on speed. You got a junior linebacker here, who's Kenny Agbana. Agbana, there we go. Kenny, Kennedy Agbana. Uh, not going to see much of him as uh, he's got a lot of guys that are probably better ahead of him. Uh, you got a senior linebacker. David Mackle, good speed. Um, just going to be one of those one-year guys for us out there at the other linebacker. Chris Corvino, another speedy linebacker, which is great. Um, he's so fast, he may play some safety, that, that hybrid safety. Our two, our two outside, you know, they're listed as strong safeties, but going forward in the series, we're going to call that position our Raven and our Lark. So the left side one is obviously the Lark, and the right side one is the Raven. Uh, but yeah, so he's going to be a backup linebacker this year, but who knows, he may play some, some Raven or some Lark for us. And then lastly, you got Kyle Gael. Gael? Yeah. Um, junior. He's got the speed, but not, not a great tackler, it doesn't look like. So won't see too much of him, but, you know, he's another guy. Going to corners, you saw couple times you saw Travis Hawkins um, yeah as you can see really fast good acceleration good speed so um, yeah he's he's a senior so we only got him for a year but this first season you're gonna see him a lot hopefully if he stays healthy then you got Mario Rousen the big big tall corner you don't see a lot of six three corners so and he's a junior so we'll have him next year then you got a junior cornerback, Jordan Thomas. Uh, and then you got Roman Tatum. Uh, good speed, but I noticed if you look down here, he's got decent catching, 
for a freshman, so that's going to improve. But the reason I'm showing you this, his tackling is not great. As you see, Jordan Thomas there is horrendous. But uh, the big thing is his man coverage and zone coverage are just really bad. And he seems like he'd be a better suited receiver. And we're going to need those as we got a couple um, seniors graduating this year. So Roman's probably going to move over to receiver next season. And probably play a little bit of receiver this year, but officially move to wide receiver next year. Uh, kind of in the same boat, but an even faster guy. You got Justin Watson as a true freshman. I haven't decided if he's going to redshirt or not because you do have a lot of seniors. Yeah, he's probably gonna redshirt, but he has, you know, for a freshman with 93 speed, 97 acceleration, that's that's low 4.3, flirting with 4.2 type speed um, as a, you know, 18 year old kid. So he's probably gonna redshirt, and then going forward in this series is gonna be like a more of a running back, wide receiver type, he doesn't really, seem like very suited on defense then you got another freshman corner mark doe um nothing great about him you he won't see a lot of him uh you saw our senior and i think he's going to be our defensive team captain jake gusty um the graduate transfer from navy uh solid speed just he's real solid just nothing nothing amazing just tackles okay good pursuit angles just one of those true like senior leader type players backing him up and going forward gonna take over for him next year probably is ryan torza uh real similar player to jake um he's gonna have a lot more time to develop and yeah Going forward, we'll see him. And you got Khalid Gaston. Gatson. Khalid Gatson. Um, what are, there was something special about him. Yeah, his tackle breaking. He's not... He breaks a lot of tackles for a free safety, which means... And he's a freshman, so I think he played both sides of the ball in high school. Uh, not a great tackler. Um, his pursuit's not great. His man coverage isn't great or anything like that. So I think what we're going to do is he's going to be more of an offensive player as well. A lot of position changes on this team. Uh, so Kalik is probably going to move into the backfield next season, play a, play a little running back, one of those, you know, just to add depth to that running back position. Um, lastly, let's look at our Ravens and our Larks, those hybrid linebacker safeties. You saw Craig Brodsky. Uh, super sophomore, just really good. He's he's gonna he's gonna develop really well, I think, if we can keep him on the field. And you got a junior, uh, Blair Menifee, slower and bigger than uh, Craig, and uh, I think he may end up moving inside and playing linebacker because of his size because we have linebackers that are faster than he is that could be better uh, safeties but for now well he'll he'll play that uh, raven or lark position opposite of craig and then lastly you got <laughs> from i believe he's from nigeria it's, it doesn't show that on the game but I looked him up. Yeah, I think he's from Nigeria. You got Simba. Let's try not to slaughter this last name. Gwash, Gwash Have Anu. Simba Gwash Have Anu. We'll just call him Simba. We're not even going to try that last name. <laughs> Simba. I'm going to have opportunity for all the memes. Um, good athlete. He, I think he's a better offensive player, too. Yeah, not great tackling. I mean, he is a freshman, so he could really develop to whatever we put him in. But yeah, not great man coverage or anything like that. But I think he, yeah, he breaks tackles okay. And his catching's okay. So he's probably going to move to a receiver type position. Yeah, like I, like I said, a lot of position changes on this team. 
Um, look at our, you know, place kickers real quick. You got a senior, she, Sean Banner. Um, yeah, I'm only going to have him for a year. And then the punter, Eric Anderson. Uh, is a power. He's got a leg, so... He's probably going to move to kicker after Sean graduates at the end of the season. And then we'll just have to find a replacement punter. I usually only use one kicker um, for both kicking and punting. And then the other guy is just kind of... So we might not even recruit another um, place kicker until Anderson graduates. Um... So yeah, that is your 2013-2014 uh, Delaware Blue Hens roster. So we, uh, as you saw the news story at the beginning, we highlighted our you know new head coach this off season, Rich Gannon, um, played I think 19 or 20 seasons in the NFL. Um, for he you know went to the Super Bowl in O2 with the Raiders lost to the Buccaneers and John Gruden uh, just a really really long NFL career smart guy um, we're lucky to have him at the helm for us um, alumni the whole deal and he's going to bring a couple of uh, former NFL players along with him to be his coordinators so our offensive coordinator is going to be Former NFL tight end Marcus Pollard. He played for the Indianapolis Colts and the Detroit Lions for the bulk of his career. I think he had a couple other stops along the way. I want to say he played for the Seahawks for a season or so. I'm not sure. But another longer NFL career, I think 10 or 12 years, something like that. Um, it shows his alma mater as Delaware, but. I think he went to Bradley. The interesting thing, I've always liked him, um, which is why we used him in the series. He he didn't play college football. He uh, went to the University of Bradley, played for the Braves, and he was a basketball player. Like you know, yeah, basketball player ended up ended up transitioning to football and playing tight end. Real like he was Antonio Gates before Antonio Gates was, you know, so. Just I thought he'd be a fun, interesting prospect to uh, have be our starting offensive coordinator for the series, and uh, we'll we'll follow all of our coordinators, um, depending how far the series goes, and see how big this coaching tree gets. And so yeah, Marcus Pollard, our offensive coordinator, and our that brings us to our defensive coordinator, one of my personal favorite players of all time. I'm a huge Michigan fan. Um, is going to be Ty Law, uh, legend at the University of Michigan, one of the most underrated NFL corners I think ever. Um, just going to be another fun name to you know follow throughout the series and uh, see where he develops too. So yeah, our coaches, you got Rich Gannon at the helm, and your two offense, your two coordinators. Our Marcus Pollard running the offense and Ty Law running the defense. Then we'll hop in and uh, before we wrap up, look at our schedule for the season real quick. We'll uh, we'll start week one off. Week one is normally, you know, you know those week one games where it's all just small schools um, playing each other. The big college football season doesn't usually start till week two, but we'll kick off the season at home with our inaugural FBS game against Texas State, another school that, you know, just a couple of years ago, well, you got to remember, we're playing like this is 2013, 2014. So just recently did the same thing we did and moved up. So we'll open the season with Texas State at home, and then we jump right into it and head to Ann Arbor to uh, play Ty Law's uh, Michigan Wolverines be the battle of the winged helmets um that one's probably gonna be ugly then we'll go to maryland play the terps mario rousen's old team then we'll head to oklahoma play the sooners that's that's gonna be a tough game too 
Um, but this is how it goes for, you know, these small teams. They got to go to these big teams and get beat up on. And, uh, yeah, it's just kind of like a rite of passage. So we'll, uh, then we'll continue conference play at home against Boston College. Uh, then we'll have a bye week. We'll go to Philadelphia and play the Temple Owls. Then we'll go ahead and play the Thundering Herd of Marshall. We'll head up to Connecticut and play UConn. Then we'll play App State. <clears throat> have another bye week. Then we play our rival, uh, James Madison University, one of the other schools that moved up with us. After that, it will be Eastern Carolina. And we will finish the season in New Jersey against the Rutgers Scarlet. Well, actually, that's a home game. So we'll finish the season at home against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Um, it says conference championship week. Don't see that happening for us. But either way, that is your first season. So I'm not going to focus too heavily on recruiting in the episodes uh, at least to start off um i'll kind of bring it up as the season goes along uh we might look at it a little bit before the first game in the next episode but so we're gonna keep recruiting really strict as far as trying to keep us from developing and getting too good too quickly so we're, all of our recruits are going to come from, you know, the Northeast. And we're going to have a lot of guys from New Jersey, uh, New York State, Pennsylvania, because the game doesn't really generate a lot of recruits from Delaware. So we're going to try to keep it as close to home as we can. I do allow myself to go after some recruits from, you know, really big football states like Florida, Texas, California, Ohio, Um if they're interested, preseason top 10. Uh, and I only recruit two more players than I have seniors leaving or what I think juniors leaving for the draft. Um, I will accept transfers the first couple seasons because I feel like in real life that would be pretty realistic for a team like this. Um, moving up a lot of... Uh, depth players from bigger schools that want to see the field transferring to uh, get more playing time so i am going to accept transfers the first couple seasons and then after that and we start to get more developed we're going to slow down but um yeah i think in the next episode i'll show the red shirts um i did do conference realignment based on geography and you know location so Along with the six teams that moved up, um, it, the landscape of the conferences looks really different. So before we kick off our game against Texas State, we'll look at that. Um, I did that to make the, I don't know, just to make it more fun. Um, it just didn't make sense when you had schools like, I don't know, uh, you had Texas A&M in the SEC when the Big 12 is basically the texas conference so all of that is set up based on location as close as i could get it and it's going to make the games more competitive and make the conference championships mean a little bit more so that was your introduction episode um i hope to have the next one out in a few days uh, and we're going to start the season with the Bl delaware blue hens against the uh, University of Texas State so yeah thanks for checking out my new channel guys and uh, go Blue Hens